Now that Battlefront 2 has officially come to an end, I wanted to do a bit of a retrospective on DICE's time with the franchise and whether or not they should be the ones to continue making the Battlefront games. Battlefront 2 has absolutely made a comeback and it's miles better than the game I played at launch. Back in my day, I had to grind credits just to play as Darth Vader, you know, the mascot of the entire series. Now the game has proper progression, all heroes are free, and even the latest skins are free except for one ridiculous skin challenge. Seriously though, I really enjoy this game. I have a soft spot for this game, it's the one that gave me my small community. Some of those community members going on to become great friends that I speak to every day. I'm definitely glad this game existed, and I'm sure a lot of you watching feel the same way. DICE also deserves credit for being able to make the comeback. Even when all the signs were saying just let this game die, they kept up supporting Battlefront. They turned the ship around, and that's commendable. However, we can't let that overshadow the even more pressing issue. DICE are the ones who failed these games in the first place, and maybe DICE aren't the best studio to make the next entry in the series. The original EA Battlefront was one of the most anticipated games of all time, and in a shocking move, the game only focused on content from the original three movies. While that's not necessarily a bad thing, after all 2015 is the most unique game in the entire series, the game still had a serious lack of content. It had no campaign, four planets, and only three heroes and three villains in launch. For the asking price of $60, it was obvious that this game was severely overpriced for what it was. Sure, after all the DLC, the game felt much more complete. There were 14 heroes and villains, many more maps, and the game felt like it was finally worth 60 bucks. Here's where the biggest issue comes in. That DLC content was locked behind a season pass. That meant players had to spend even more money just to complete their game. Obviously, this didn't go over that well, but players at the time had no idea that this was the least of their worries. Battlefront 2's advertising campaign made this game seem like a dream come true for Star Wars fans. Three eras, a campaign, space battles returned in full force, it was everything the fans had been asking for. It was just too bad they were lying. EA advertised characters like Jango Fett and Obi-Wan in official art only to not include them in the base game. The prequels and sequels only had two characters each and only three maps per era. But that wasn't even the worst of it. Battlefront 2's Season Pass was going to be free, but the game would feature pay-to-win microtransactions to pay for the content. Battlefront 2 infamously featured star cards, which enhanced all of the units in the game, whether they be heroes, villains, infantry, reinforcements, vehicles, etc. Everything in the game could be enhanced, and you would enhance them by buying loot crates with these cards inside. Not only that, but heroes were locked behind in-game credits as well. This meant if you wanted to play as Chewbacca, Darth Vader, Palpatine, Leia, Luke, or even the game's mascot, Iden Versio, you would have to fork up serious in-game currency. This added to the controversy, as the paid loot boxes would give the players that currency if they pulled a card they already had. DICE defended this action and said it was to give the player a sense of pride and accomplishment. That reddit post infamously became the most downvoted of all time. The internet exploded and Battlefront 2 became the most hated game on the internet. So why are we talking about the controversies that have been over with for years now? Battlefront 2 is in a good spot, I've already said that. Well, this is DICE's legacy with the series. When we talk about a Battlefront 3, we have to talk about their track record with new Battlefront game releases. Battlefront 2015 launched incomplete, only to be finished later. Battlefront 2 was more of the same. Why would anyone in their right mind trust them to do it again? Everyone rushing to the comments to say, DICE fixed Battlefront 2 though, they deserve to make the third game. Keep in mind we said those same exact words when Battlefront 2 was coming out. 
Do you think the most ruthless company in entertainment would tolerate that kind of damage to their precious Star Wars IP and just let DICE take a third crack at it when they failed twice? I personally don't think Disney would let DICE make another Star Wars game at all. Now that we've brought up Disney, let's talk about the Disney EA deal. Back in 2013, Disney acquired the Star Wars IP from George Lucas for $4 billion. Disney entered an agreement with EA. The agreement stated that EA had exclusive rights to make games based on the Star Wars franchise. However, we have pretty solid evidence that the deal is a lot more lenient than it may seem. Since that agreement, two LEGO Star Wars games have been made. One in 2016, after Battlefront 2015, and the other will come out this year. Granted, after LEGO The Force Awakens, EA really did make the only Star Wars games. But now that's not the case again. LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga has nothing to do with EA, and it's the only Star Wars game coming out in 2020. EA has also released a singular good Star Wars game since the deal was made. The other games have all been cancelled or poor received by the public at launch. It stands to reason that Disney would pull out of the deal, or at the very least, crack the whip on the smaller company EA. Yeah, that's a terrifying thought, isn't it? That EA is the small fish in this scenario. Back to the beginning of the video, I actually don't think DICE should get to make the next Battlefront game. And I don't believe Disney feels that way either. If I'm wrong and DICE ends up making another Battlefront, oh well, I was wrong. I'll still play the game and I do think they've learned their lesson. That being said, I feel like there are definitely better choices out there, and there is some evidence that might hint that Disney feels the same way I do. Let's go back to that Disney EA deal again. That deal was made back in 2013, and it was only a deal for 10 years. Game development is a lengthy, costly endeavor, and EA only has three and a half years to churn out another Battlefront game. But they recently confirmed Battlefront 3 hasn't even begun development yet. Nobody is working on a new Battlefront game right now. Every single employee at DICE is working on Battlefield 6 for a 2021 release. Is that not a little strange? If a Battlefield 6 drops in holiday 2021 and that game has a post-launch cycle, not only would they only have two years to make a next-gen Battlefront 3, but they would have a much smaller team than Battlefield 6 has because team members would stay behind to support that game. If a single delay went through, they would miss their 2023 deadline. Does that not make it seem like development of a Battlefront game would go to another studio? Maybe Respawn Entertainment would be the next to take a crack at it. Then they could make use of DICE's Frostbite engine, or at the very least pull from the existing assets from the last two games. Or, and this is purely speculation, Disney is going to go outside of EA for Battlefront 3. Here's a little riddle for you guys. Who is infamous for third-person shooters, has worked with Disney on game projects, and has become a third-party, multi-platform publisher after obtaining three big studios this year. That's right, it's Epic Games. They have quite the pedigree of third-person shooters. Gears of War, Paragon, and Fortnite are all well-made games. Even if you're tired of Fortnite being the biggest game on the market, it's impossible to deny the game's polish and quality. Speaking of Fortnite, it's insane how many crossovers the company has had with Disney. Wreck-It Ralph, Star Wars, and two Avengers crossovers, a Deadpool battle pass, and a May the 4th event today. Two of those IPs that Fortnite have been working with are Disney's most valuable out of their entire pantheon. The directors of Endgame even put Fortnite into the movie giving the game an advertisement in the largest film of all time. Tell me Disney wouldn't be able to convince Epic to make a game for their own IPs. Epic definitely has the resources and I think the quality would blow anything DICE could make out of the water. We're going to do a little exercise really quickly. Everyone close your eyes and pretend you're the CEO of Disney or even just the head of the gaming department. 
Let's pretend that you have to decide who gets to make the next Star Wars Battlefront game. Keep in mind this is the most valuable gaming franchise for all of Star Wars. Despite being the most hated game of all time, Battlefront 2 sold at least 7 to 8 million units in 2017. That is such an insane number for a game with such a huge controversy surrounding it. You have two options. Option 1, the studio that's made the last two Battlefront games and they've disappointed both times. The second time they did serious damage to the IP. They lowered the value of the IP and they made the general public cautious of Star Wars games in general. Option 2. The studio you've been lending your IPs to for various crossovers. They're at the helm of the largest and most profitable game in the world, they're a masterclass when it comes to third person shooters, and a Star Wars game from them would be a surefire financial success. Yeah, I don't think DICE is the best option here, but I could be wrong. DICE might have proved themselves to Disney with their apology tour in Battlefront 2. They have a pedigree of their own, and their Battlefield series helped inspire Battlefront in the first place. DICE has the assets and practice necessary to finally make a great entry in the series at release, and they could already be preparing. While they may not be working on the game, Let's look at the hard facts here. Fact number one, a lot of the content that seemed like it should have been a surefire inclusion was never added. Content to go alongside Fallen Order like Cal and the Second Sister. After all, that's EA's own game and advertising it in Battlefront 2 would only make them more money. Content to go with the Mandalorian like, well, the Mandalorian. Mace Windu, who has been in every Battlefront pre-EA, even the original as an NPC, Jango Fett, who pairs perfectly with the guy who cut his head off, Ahsoka and Ventress, they added Felucia instead of Coruscant, easily the most requested planet in the history of the game. Hell, the sequel era content has content that's obviously missing. Poe Dameron was easily the most requested sequel era character and the team went with BB-8 instead. If you ask me, it feels like DICE is saving content to sell the next game. Fact number two, there is a virus going around. Working from home is probably a lot less efficient than using a studio, and with COVID out and about for 2020, having every man on deck could be necessary for Battlefield to meet its 2021 deadline. For all we know, Battlefront 2 was supposed to be supported for even longer, but because of COVID and EA's desire to make Battlefield a flagship title again and for it to be successful, they just cut all other games and just focused all of their development strength on Battlefield. Then after they finished Battlefield, the only two years to make Battlefront 3 would be in a world without COVID. And finally, I want to bring up the Disney EA deal one last time. We have no idea about the details of the agreement, and that means any assumptions made on it could easily be wrong, including the assumptions I'm making. My thought that EA is cutting it awfully close to the 2023 deadline could be misplaced. That deal could just cover any game that starts development through 2023 even if the development goes past the year 2023. While I still personally think DA is probably going to go with someone aside from DICE, there's still a shot that DICE gets to continue their work on the series. Either way, I'm sure the next Battlefront game will be the best since the original Battlefront 2. Well, at least I hope it is. And with all of that said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you got this far into the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. It really does help. And as a small little baby channel, um, it means more than anything. I notice every single like and I try my best to reply to every single comment. Of course, may the fourth be with you and I'll smell you guys later.